John Wilkes Booth, an acclaimed rising star of the theater, the youngest heir to the country's most beloved acting family, and possibly the most notorious figure in American history. We all know of his last and most famous act, but who was the man behind that Derringer? I'm Montgomery Sutton, and I play John Wilkes here at Second Thought Theater in Dallas, Texas, in the world premiere of Stephen Walter's Booth, which chronicles the last months of his life and the aftermath of the assassination. Before this process, I, probably like most of you, knew next to nothing about him before he stepped into the state box on April 14, 1865. So I set out to discover his history on foot. I hope you'll join me over the next four episodes as we explore moments of his life and the places where they happened, from his childhood home to the ground where he finally met his prophesied bitter end. This is the land where John Wilkes Booth grew up. Behind me is Tudor Hall, which was built by his father, Junius Brutus Booth, who was the most acclaimed actor of his day, first in England and then here in America, after he immigrated here with his mistress, a woman named Mary Ann Holmes. Now, Junius wanted to keep his family far from the public eye, so he moved them to a huge plot of land here north of Baltimore in Bel Air, Maryland. But Tudor Hall wouldn't be completed until the 1850s, so when John Wilkes was born, it was in a log cabin that stood right here. Part of the reason he did this is because he left his wife back in England and didn't want that anybody who was uh, coming in from England visiting to find out that he was with another woman. So this was a, a very remote area. And he rented a cabin, a, a log house, on a property next to Tudor Hall. And then the following year, he purchased this property, which it came to about 177 acres altogether. In 1824, he purchased 160 acres. The following year, he purchased an additional 17 acres. And he moved, he actually purchased a house on the Rogers Farm next door in, 18, in uh, 1824 and moved that with the whole community watching. It was amazing, he had mules, everyone was out, they'd, they'd never seen anything like it. During a meteor shower in 1833, Marianne gave birth to a boy named Edwin. Next came a daughter, Asia, and on May 10, 1838, John Wilkes was born. The siblings performed plays for each other here in these woods, and John and Asia would spend long days out by a pond that was at the end of this creek. John and Asia would uh, be on horseback trampling through the woods. He would be taking old swords that he had and attacking imaginary enemies and, and uh, just having a lot of fun. Um, there's an Asia Booth's book, a Yun Lot book, um, that's where her memoirs of John Wilkes Booth. She, there's one instance where she uh, approached John while he was on a hammock out front of here in Tudor Hall and said, you gotta check this out. So he brought her, I mean, she brought him down to, uh, several fields away to this uh, brook and she had a guitar. She said, sit down, be really quiet and just sit down here. She started playing the guitar and started singing softly and just told John to be quiet. All of a sudden, all these frogs just started popping their heads up in the water, just all over the place. And they started kind of like swimming towards her and they all just got up and it's like almost like a, a whole audience there until um, she stopped playing and John spoke and all of a sudden it kind of like broke out of their spell and they all hopped back in and hid. Junius was the breadwinner, not just for his own family of Mary Ann and six children, but also for his father, his sister, her husband, their eight children, and by way of payments, his first wife, Adelaide, who was still living in London with their son, Richard. She knew nothing about Mary Ann. Junius was an empathetic man who was a vegetarian at a time when not to eat meat was looked at as insanity. He wept over the death of even the smallest insect and he was a staunch abolitionist. But Junius wasn't without his darker flaws. Alcohol was a major personal demon. And Mary Ann was forced to send young Edwin, not even a teenager, on the road with his father to make sure he wasn't so drunk that he couldn't perform to get money back to his family. Today, the Milton Inn is one of Maryland's most acclaimed fine dining institutions. But in the 19th century, 
It was the Milton Academy for Boys, a school which John Wilkes attended beginning in 1849 at the age of 11. It's also here that he reportedly gave one of his first public performances at a school picnic. Asia and his mother Mary Ann attended as he performed an excerpt from The Merchant of Venice where he played Shylock. And according to his sister Asia, when the audience applauded, John Wilkes blushed. On the road with his father, Edwin watched from backstage like a moth to the flame, learning by osmosis the tricks of his father's trade. Eventually, though Junius disapproved of his children taking up the acting profession, Edwin would join his father on stage. Junius, in the first half of the, of the, eight, uh, first half of the 19th century, was the, probably one of the greatest American actors, of, uh, Shakespearean actors and tragedies in the country. And of course, Edwin, his son, in the second half of the 19th century, became the greatest actor. And most theater historians, many of them will say, probably Edwin was probably the greatest American actor we've ever had. For John Wilkes, when he came home from school, he was the man of the house, doted upon by his mother and sister Asia. If you're looking right over my shoulder, you probably see up there at that balcony right there. That's um, the balcony where John Wilkes Booth's bedroom uh, supposedly it was, and that's what we believe. Uh, and Ella Mahoney, the second owner of this house, it titled that the uh, Romeo and Juliet balcony, because that's where John and his sister Asia and all his friends would come over and, and practice around here. But there was always a jealousy inside, wishing that it was he, instead of Edwin, catching the glory of his father. Join us back here for the next installment of I Am Myself Alone or experience the story in person at Second Thought Theater through June 14th, 2014. And stick around after the video to get more information about visiting Tudor Hall for yourself. In 2006, Tudor Hall went up for an au for an auction, and the county bought the, the whole 8.3 acres that the house Tudor Hall is on right now. It's actually 8.3 acres that we're on that's left of the 177 acres. And <clears throat> the Junius Bruce Booth Society was incorporated to open this up to the public, to give tours, and, and, and assist it to cut, and help it to become a museum down the road with the help of the county. So that's what we're in the process of doing right now. And we're right now we're in the baby steps of that, having that happen.